In addition to the characteristics of inductive argument we mentioned in the last segment, there's another feature of induction that we should note. Unlike deductions, the conclusions of inductive inferences go beyond the evidence we find in the premises. There's a leap involved that oversteps the information offered in the premises. This leap is particularly well adapted to those sciences that are based on observation, such as physics and biology, where scientists work with a sample of cases. As the observed cases increase, the inferential leap becomes surer and the conclusion more reliable. For instance, the more cases we observe of metals expanding when heated, the more sure we are in believing that all metals expand when heated. Think about the number of cases in which we have observed that smoking is correlated to lung disease. The more cases we observe, the more convinced we become that smoking increases the risk of developing lung cancer. What happens when we acquire additional evidence when reasoning inductively? Take this example. Suppose we know that 98% of MEC students are involved in politics and that Heather is a student at MEC. We would reasonably conclude that Heather is involved in politics. But now, suppose we acquire an additional piece of information that Heather never votes. Our conclusion would now have to change. People who don't vote are seldom involved in political processes. How can we characterize the differences between induction and deduction? First, inductive premises never necessitate their conclusion, so there's never entailment in induction. Second, there's also no truth preservation. Finally, it is always possible for the premises of an induction to be true and the conclusion nevertheless false. This concludes this segment of a multi-part lecture on induction. Please proceed to the next segment.